the skies I say thanks for favor to wake up and Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates viewers. Now we are moving away from Carnival into something that's very practical for our food security here in Tobago. And that is a special seminar being put on uh, for farmers as we talk about, you know, how do we treat with climate change and make it sure we get the best yield from our crops as our climate, uh, as we're faced with different things around in the atmosphere and so on. So, um, just to talk to us about what is uh, going to be happening uh, to well, tomorrow, I should say. We are first of all being joined by Mr. Ramesh Rajman, of course, and he is the president of the Argyle United Farmers Development Group. And they, of course, are the ones that are hosting this special seminar. And we are also being joined by Mr. Marcus Maiku, who is an agronomist and he's the chairman of Mar Vista Institute for Agriculture. So good morning and welcome to you both. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Good Thank morning. you for inviting us and to be here. It's a pleasure. Now I'm going to start with Mr. Rajman. Why are you, did you guys choose to have this conference here in Tobago? Okay, so let me say thanks for having me Tobago updates to the people of Tobago and the rest of the world that watching. I'm happy to be here all the time with Tobago updates. However, this training program was an initiative between a discussion with some stakeholders. And Mr. Marcus Michael is one of the stakeholders. Republic Bank also is one of the initiators of this yeah, joint venture. And the Tobago House of Assembly. Hats off to Natisha Charles, Ms. Natisha Charles Pantin, for you know the support. Right? And the farmers of Tobago, right? They, I mean, come on board with us and I mean, it's oversubscribed. Now, the need for this training program is as a result of the experiences that we are having on the farm. Right? And tell me a little bit about those experiences that you're facing right now. Okay, we have saturated soil. Mm -hmm. And in addition to saturated soil, you get fungus right and you had to treat with it with immediate and you had to know exactly what type of fungus it is right um you also have different type of insects that will come around and you have to know the the, the science behind the whole thing the methodology of the application for the plant so all in all going forward for 2024 we thought it was really a plus for the farmers of Tobago because we are looking at food security and sustainability because if we continue to just do things as normal continue the normal way we're not going to make it we're going to get food but not great yield where production is concerned mm -hmm. right so the initiative is really to enhance production and greater yield educating the farmers we need to get out of the you know the the past and get into a new transition with respect to farming and see farming as a business not as leisure you know or is backyard farming stories and Mr. Michael, you know, so I mean, I'm probably going to be speaking to you quite a bit um, for this because, you know, this is one of the rare opportunities that we get to have you on our set. Thank but, you. you know, what are the, some of those things that our farmers are doing right now that is not working? It may have worked in the past, but with the changing conditions that we're faced with right now in the environment, it's not helping us. All right. So I'll, I'll give you an example. And, and there are many. Mm -hmm. Um, tomorrow we're going to be showing a range of crops or plants, seedlings that are commonly available at the nurseries. And I'm just, you know, let's focus on, let's say you want to plant a citrus plant. Most people, I believe yourself as well, will choose, if you have a, a range of plants in front of you, quite likely you'll probably choose the largest. I guess we buy with our eyes anyhow. Now, usually, not always, the largest, when you examine the roots now, so it's in a bag, it's in a potting bag or something like that, usually the roots are coiled. That sounds very simple. And you open the bag and you look at the soil and you look at the roots, they're matted up and they're coiled. Now, for a plant or a tree, 
seedling, tomato, citrus, or what. The tap root, the main root, the first root that pops at germination, that root is the core root usually in the crop that anchors the crop. Okay, so you're planting a mango tree or mango plant or citrus. What you want the root and as it is growing, so we normally consider growth to be above ground what you're seeing, but below the ground, below the soil, activity is happening. You want those roots, especially that top root, which is the structural root in the crop. That's the root that anchors the crop. It is, the, well, and they will hear that tomorrow, it's the root uh, that very much is related to the hormonal balance of the crop next to them. Plants have hormones, animals, human beings have hormones. So that root system and that tap root is very much related to the hormonal balance of the crop. We'll get to that. Now, if you are choosing the older plant, which is what is available here as well as in Trinidad, and I assure you the rest of the Caribbean, the plants are older. In fact, the nurseries that we're picking up, but we were examining, and I'll show you tomorrow, the rootstock, so now we talk another thing, that's the rootstock, you're going to bud or graft onto the main plant. If the rootstock is two years old, try to picture what that, those roots look like. They're matted, they coil, they're in the bag, they're old. You are asking those roots that are coiled and matted to uncoil and grow straight through the soil. Mission impossible. That's not going to happen. So what we need to have is to have plants that are younger and you can change the nutrition system to get the crop to grow quicker and more rooted in the beginning. That's just a change in nutrition so that we can transplant those seedlings or those plants or those tomato or citrus or whatever earlier with the taproot more poised to grow straight through the soil, not coil and so on. Now, if you think that through, apart from the fact that I was telling, the, telling Ramesh our audience tomorrow might be surprised to know that a papaya as a crop can be six months from seed, from transplant. What is the norm? Nine and a half, ten and a half months. Well, part of the six month story, which I have done and experienced for the last 20 plus years, since my son was three years old, is part of what we're talking about. Seedling age, it's a revision. So you ask me, so what do we need to review what we do in uh, normally mm -hmm. well that's one it's very simple no rocket science but that crop now so let's talk now how is that related we talk a little bit about yield maybe how is that related to the issues presented by climate change one of them certainly is anticipated drought extreme heat right extreme heat maybe drought yes and uh, we're going to be seeing quite we, a lot that you've done your work you've done your research right <laughs> yes. clearly and from what they say, I think you're talking the next time, a, p a block of maybe five to seven years before it switches around La Nina and El Nino, whichever one. Yeah. But it's getting worse. So if you think, and I want you to reflect on the viewers, tomato in Trinidad, I suppose peaked during Christmas week at $32 a pound. Now, while that is sort of customary because, you know, it's supply and demand and Christmas and whatnot, 32 is off the chart. Sweet pepper and ramesh and mm -hmm. other crops were very expensive. Well, that was directly related to the extreme heat that we had in September, October, November. We are in January. Mm -hmm. this, is not the, is the, this is normally the coolest time of the year. December, January, February, March, maybe. Right? What are the temperatures? 32, 33. Nighttime temperature is 24, 25. That is directly related to the capacity of tomato and other crops to flower, so pollination, fruit set, fruit development. I just gave you a foundational reason. Listen to me. With all that high heat that we had, the tomatoes couldn't flower, nor could they set. They were aborting all the time. No. So that's what the crops will do. How can we respond to that? Maybe we may select varieties that are more tolerant. That ain't going to happen tomorrow. Mm. We have time, that, that it requires time. Breeding work doesn't happen overnight. 
the technology that we are talking and we will discuss a lot tomorrow and we did that with the Argyle group in September October. I think we yes. were here in September. September. We had a group of about what 50, 50 people plus, plus yes. in Kendall. Right? Yeah. I would dare to say, ma'am, that their world has changed. Right? Mm -hmm. Saying it simply. Well, we need to change here too. We need to bring more transformative technology. I just mentioned a very simple approach to proper production where we were talking about the taproot. No rocket science, but I assure you that our nurseries are stuck in a warp. Here the word that I'm using for the last 25 and 30 years. And we are approaching the coming period, as he said, with the same mindset and the same tools. All we know is we climate change is upon us, we need to do this and we need to do that, right? But what, what are the simple things? I just mentioned one. What does that taproot growing deeper and more aggressively in the soil mean? And that growth pattern is limited in period between transplant and before the first flower expresses. It's a window. Right? You're talking a little crop physiology now. So you'll have a limited time. If you're past that time, the crop will no longer focus on root development. There's no study in flowering and fruiting. See the stages now, right? We're running it quickly. So it's critical to understand what the crop is doing in the beginning, when, window, maximize on the root development. Why? It may stand to reason that if the root is going deeper into the soil, what does that mean? It should be anchored better because we're facing extreme rain and heavy wind and whatever, we will be feeding from a wider area of soil, which may imply we will have access to more moisture and more nutrients since we are feeding from a wider soil. What I just said to you, I learned in school 35 years ago, right? No rocket science, except we're not doing it. And we're blaming all kind of thing. No policy, no this, no government, all kind of... Not that those things are not true too. But they are fundamentals. Yeah, very practical solutions. Fundamentals. I give you one. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, when you look, I mean, for us, you know, just regular citizens, and when you go and you buy crops, um, vegetables and so on, whether it be from farmers like Mr. Amish or from the grocery and whatnot, one thing that we're constantly faced with is that they don't last very long. Yeah. The, I mean, idea is there practical solutions to help our farmers, you know, produce crops that's, that, that, that last. <laughs> well, you're raising another <laughs> sensitive topic, but, but I, I will try. So, a lot of the crops we grow, remember we are growing the crops on the same piece of soil year in, year out. Eh? It's not renewing, it's not being renewed. And so we've come to a place where you need to um, substitute or, or uh, add additional nutrients. So now we're talking synthetic fertilizers. And I want to say to the audience, by the way, and everybody will talk, well, urea is artificial and it's synthetic. Ammonium nitrogen. You're viewing Tobago Updates Television, your exclusive gateway to Tobago, broadcasting the beauty of this island paradise to the world. It has one smell. Ammonia smells. So when you pass and you have the load of pen manure or chicken manure, how does it smell? Ammonia. Well, it's the same smell urea has. They both contain the same nutrient, okay? One is synthetic, one is through the, the manual. The issue is not the nutrient, the issue is how much we use using and when. So manual naturally will disintegrate and de decompose and release the nutrients slowly to the plant. The urea is like if you add salt in water. Whoa, it's gone salty, right? Well, it's the same thing with urea. So now we have to talk placement, quantity, timing. All that, those are training areas. You would be shocked, certainly in Trinidad, I know how much it is in Tobago. We're wasting, we're fertilizing every week mm -hmm. in a crop that should not be fertilized mm -hmm. more than two, three times in a nine-month period of fertilizing every week. 
are the, are the, are the dots. They look nice and good, but they will break down fast because they're not balanced. That is a training area, right? Now I have a, a pet, I suppose peeve one might say. Why at 2023, 2024? We still had to revisit that. That's a basic thing I just said. But it is speaking that we need a critical review of our practices and of the sector. Not rocket science. Nothing I have said, ma'am, for the last 10 minutes or whatever is rocket science. Nothing. But I am certain that the way it was presented, have you reviewing quickly what you think? Certainly. I mean, and then when, I mean, when we think about, as we're talking about climate change and everything too, one of the things that are even affecting our seas and whatnot is the increase of fertilizer mm -hmm. runoff from the farms. Right. And so farmers continue, in, like in you said. Use. Right? right, and that is now affecting our, the right. health of our reefs and mm -hmm. making, Very causing simple. challenges for our land, which Very is also simple. gonna cause challenges for farmlands. <laughs> so, so there's an urgent review of how we use our resources. In fact, tomorrow we're going to be talking about using microbial technologies to release stored nutrients in the soil. That's at a, that's one might say that is the cutting edge of the soil nutrition frontier. That is not only new technology, you know, that is 25 years ago. All right? It in the, it's stuck in the universities. Next comment. We're doing the research and we're reviewing for the last 10 years and whatnot and it is not impacting on the farmers. Well, if I had to say in my personal capacity as chairman of Miatid, Malbista, I told you I knew papayas are six months crop 20 plus years ago. We have tried to collaborate with others. Well, now no more. Time to get on the ground in a different way. I have been on the ground and we have been on the ground regionally I worked in Belize and Jamaica, right down to Suriname. I was in Suriname last week. I'm going to send yes. some pictures of you where I was in the rice field, the rice farmers in Nikeri. That's where it really needed. Mm -hmm. So part of the institute, a purpose of the institute is to bring the research. I'm a trained agronomist. Everybody tomorrow, they are highly trained people. Enough of the old talk. It is in one sense, as I was saying, uh, Ramesh, I don't know if I'm going overboard, but in one sense, if it is true, if it is true that we have known and been doing these things in other places for 20 plus years, who lose? Who have lost? The people that you said up at the top that are very special people to be a farmer, by the way, that have plenty belly to have, no, I don't mean that in the literal <laughs> sense, but you have to have plenty guts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You're facing crop loss every year. The weather, the price, they can't get this, all kind of nonsense they're facing over and over. To be a farmer, I have said to my staff and to others, you have to be a special human being. As one. So we need to honor that. Because clearly, if the farmer is not involved, we have no food to eat. It's simple as that. But from my perspective, and I am, guess I'm personalizing it, if what I say is true, then we've lost a lot of time. The simple thing I just said to you about the root system is not rocket science. I can recall the lecture in the university in my agronomy days. He's now deceased, Prof. Uh, Dr. Dhanan Rajkumar. And Dr. Dhanan Rajkumar was teaching me and teaching a group of, in those days it was 50, 60 people in our classroom, now it's 10. So I suppose that's an, that's a, a comment on a statement of where agriculture is. And I remember him distinctly teaching us about what I just said to you. When you're planting a tree crop, ensure that the root growth, as far as it's possible, which it is, is done directly in the soil. Mm. Do, if you're planting, don't bend the roots. I would say you follow. Yes. <laughs> but you, you would be amazed Many of us not doing that. And let me make it worse. So we train. I'm giving you a, 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 a dynamic now. We train to be relevant, with the word, 
because we trained in an in a academic setting, maybe with a one or two year practical. I was an agronomist, that was my background. But you come out now and you have to meet the farmers, the farmers on the ground. To be practical, well, you need to see what the farmers are doing. And we need to learn from what they're doing, especially the senior farmers and all the successful farmers. Very often that process does not, does not gain from the benefit of what we learn. It is primarily driven by what the farmer is doing, who has been successful, and we repeat it. And we go down the road now and teach the other person the same thing. If you're listening carefully, there are positives that will be transmitted, and very often there will be negatives that are, will be continued. That, my dear, is the history of our agriculture. With all the trained people we have in this country, by the way, but wherever that land it land, this stage in life really don't matter. Well, you know, I'm very much enjoying this conversation and I could continue talking with you. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine. Um, but you know, I mean we have to unfortunately wrap this morning. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it I mean it's if if you learned I, I certainly learned quite a lot and you took me back to some of those early um lesson days from mm -hmm. agriculture mm -hmm. in school and yeah. stuff like that and how important those were yeah. and yeah, those things were lost. <laughs> in, in, in our practical application mm -hmm. throughout but certainly if you want to hear more tomorrow um it's happening at mr ramesh just give the details yes. very quickly so 9 a.m tomorrow at the shopper cultural complex and finishing at 4 p.m it is a we have a certificate it's a participant you know attending you know would be getting a certificate for attendance um whole day we there so we expect to feed the people over 100 we people we, we must feed to. them we have yeah. to. <laughs> and we have a little coffee break for them and Very things good. like that mm -hmm. so they would be well taken care of at that venue so we don't expect them to leave and a matter of fact the one that we had the seminar that we had at Kendall for five four days it was I mean well attended and they stayed for the five days and I'm expecting for one day here the a matter of fact we get people from all over Tobago Right? So it's not just country alone we look at. We, we look at all over Tobago. And a hundred people we catered for, and we got a hundred people. Uh, and so plus, yeah. and we oversubscribed. All right. Well, so viewers, if you are a farmer, whether you're a small or a large farmer, or somewhere in between, um, this is something that you need to go to and make sure well, that... It, it, it's closed. It's closed. It's quite likely we probably have to rerun the course. But. Right. The registrations, um, Ms. Uh, Adiram, who is our program assistant for MIATID, uh, informed me last week that it was closed, I think, at Friday. Mm -hmm. We have about, maybe about 40 or more, 50 people want to attend, but unfortunately, we had to lock off. Right? Well, but I, I think we we'll probably did, do that, it again. That's probably a good sign, and it means that we yeah. need to have this happen more often. Can I yeah. just stick one pin in there? Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly. quickly. Now, I'm just hoping the assembly really buy into this concept with Marvista Institute of Training in Agriculture to see them as a necessity to the farmers of Tobago, right? And let us work together as a partner, you know, to ensure that the farmers on the ground get the technology, the science behind the technology, and let us work together. Thank you so much, viewers, for a very enriching conversation this morning. All right, viewers, and that's how we're going to have to wrap things up because we are definitely over time. So thank you for being with here with us, and we will see you again tomorrow.